requirement to detain in paragraph one shall only shall apply to a person who is detention under the under the section 1022 or 1021 who is determined to be a member or part of Al Qaeda or associated force that acts in coordination with or support to the direction of, of Al Qaeda. Now this is pretty clear. We're talking about Al Qaeda here. There's no vague terminology. There's no. Uh, there's, it doesn't break up. It's all one flowing language right there. And the requirement to detain in paragraph one, which is shall, so you go up to shall, except as provided in paragraph four, the armed forces of the United States shall hold the person described in paragraph two. So technically, we are only talking about al-Qaeda in here, and this does not offer any protections to American citizens. Now, this is the statement that refers up there. Section 1022B1, United States citizen, the requirement to detain a person in military custody under this section does not extend to citizens of the United States. Okay, first of all, making the requirement not extend to American citizens is making it an option. If you're not required to do something, you can still do it, correct? Now, I've been thinking to myself, Congress makes a lot of prohibitive language, okay? Don't you think they would just simply cut and paste something into this and not leave the option open to make it ambiguous? Personally, I would think so. I would think there would be better language than the requirement to detain. Which we already went over the requirement to detain in the last slide. It is shall and it only applies to Al-Qaeda. And the title of this section, which does say in this section, is foreign Al-Qaeda terrorists. We're not talking about U.S. citizens in section 1021. So that argument is irrelevant. And here's just a headline I saw today that wasn't very pleasing, but it was about a teenager. 